Hello my viewers, welcome to another Hexmaniac Advanced Tutorial. This tutorial is Advanced Number 2, Text Editing. This video will cover a lot about text editing, such as searching for text, the formatting of text in Hexmaniac Advanced, how to recognize text, some flaws in the text detection algorithm, various formats of text, and certain limitations to using text in Hexmaniac Advanced. Starting off, if you want to find certain text in your ROM, you need to go to the Edit menu, and find the option that says find, not go to. Go to has a different purpose. If you try to search for the text via the go to menu, it won't work all of the time. The top right of your screen will have the text box that is associated with the find feature. If there's more than one result of a particular text string, Hexmanic Advance will open a new tab full of search results, and you can double click the search result that you want and do whatever you want with it. Sometimes you'll just see bytes that are colored white instead of like orange lowercase letters. Trust me, the text is still there, it's just not formatted because Hexmanic Advance did not recognize it as actual text. See these white colored numbers and letters and the gray zero zeros? In order to make that raw data be visible as text, right click any of the bytes and you will see a menu that says display as, hover over it and click text. In most cases, the raw data will quote unquote transform into text and you can edit it in the text tool or directly in the hex editor panel. I almost forgot to mention that if you're editing text, don't worry about whether or not you'll run out of space and or are overwriting data. If Hexmanic Advance no longer has room to handle your text, it will automatically repoint everything to free space and move all the data over and update all the known pointers to the text. It also only overwrites FF bytes and 00, zero bytes when editing text. I'll do a quick demonstration for you. If you think that not all pointers got updated, go back to the original location of the string and search for its address in the ROM. Now I'm going to find the pointer, if there are any. So I type the last two bytes first, then the next two bytes, and then the first two bytes, followed by either 08 or 09. And let's see if we find anything. Nope. So that means the text was actually repointed in its entirety. Look at the anchor text box for a quick second. Almost all text strings that Hexmanic Advance recognize have a very specific formatting. And after the caret or circumflex, there are two pairs of quotation marks right after it. That is the formatting Hexmanic Advance uses for in-game text. If the technique to display as text doesn't work, which sometimes it won't because Hexmanic Advance is not a perfect piece of software, you can go to what you think is the start of the text string. With enough practice, you will have a general sense as to when the start of a text string is. Usually it will be a byte that is either a0 or higher. At the first byte of the string, you can do shift 6 to get a circumflex, type in basically any name you want, and end off with two pairs of quotation marks. One thing you need to watch out for is that while sometimes you can just use circumflex in two pairs of quotation marks to make Hexmanic Advance display something as a string, if the program cannot find any use for that text, for example, if it's a text string you made but you didn't like give it a use, Hexmanic Advance won't let you display it as text unless you give it a custom name. As mentioned before, Hexmanic Advance is not perfect, and there are instances where Hexmanic Advance will think something is text when it really is not. For example, in this ROM hack, there is a sequence of capital E's and lowercase e's with diacritics, and that is 100% not something an NPC would say. Come to think about it, I actually don't know what this data is supposed to be, but I'm pretty sure it's not text. Either way, you can right-click the text and click Clear Format so that it no longer displays that set of bytes as text. If you used a third-party software to make scripts that NPCs will use in, your, in the overworld, it is common to see text strings occur right after the entire NPC script. 
so what ends up happening is that the script itself is misrepresented as text, while you cannot actually display the actual text as text unless you clear format on the O Q C L O E I A bytes. If you want Hexmanic Advanced to recognize that particular instance every time you load the ROM in the application, you will have to make sure that those bytes that you just used clear format on are represented as script uh, bytes instead of actual text. In order to do this, Kind of like defining text, what you do is you do a uh, circumflex, you give it a name, and then I didn't do this in the video because the key that I need to use in, is actually an OBS hotkey. It's the grave accent, which is directly to the left of your one key. You need a total of two of those characters, and in between them you type XSE for NPC scripting. In another sector of this ROM, I actually go to a script just to show you that that is the formatting of any NPC script in the game. You can see that there are two graves with the letters XSE in the middle. There's another format of text that Hexmanic Advance can recognize. It's not used as often and it's not as essential to your game as the other one, but I thought I'd just mention it anyway. The main purpose is to basically just implement comments into your ROM as you're hex editing. None of the text is actually used in the game, like, at all. If you right-click, like, say, Pokemon Fire, it will tell you that nothing points to this. The bytes that the purple text use are different than the bytes that the orange text use, meaning that you cannot use purple comment text in your ROM in the same way you can with orange text. If you go to the Selected Bytes section on the bottom right of your screen, you will notice that the letters and numbers differ between types of text, even though both of them say Pokemon Fire. Nevertheless, I will still show you how to get text in that format so that you could use it to make comments or something similar. The specific formatting is as follows. Grave, A, S, C, Grave. And the important part is that there's a number that you have to put after, which signifies how many bytes to occupy with this very specific formatting. Unlike NPC orange text, which is more flexible in this regard, ASCII text or ASC text has this constraint. This is actually a recent addition to Hexmanic Advance. Like NPC text, you can go to the text tab on the left of your ROM. Right underneath the word content, you can edit the text to your heart's desire. However, unlike the orange text, you are limited to, in this case, 16 characters, or however many you defined it as. If you try to go over, nothing will happen to your ROM. Something that you'll use a lot when you make NPCs that say stuff are escape characters. Basically the backslashes, which are underneath your backspace key. If you put a couple of letters after the backslash, then your text will have characters that aren't necessarily letters or numbers or punctuation. So something like backslash N will make a new line, backslash L will also make a new line, but you need to use it if you already have two lines of text in a text box. Slash PN will make a new text box of text, which is useful if you wanted to make like a new paragraph or something like that. If you go into the folder with your Hexmanic Advanced Executable, open the pcsreference.txt file. It will have a list of all of the characters that Hexmanic Advance recognizes, and many of them will have comments on what they do. At the bottom of this PCS reference file, there's a whole list of control codes and macros that contain the colors and player names, rival names, and other like side commands that can be called through text for whatever reason. By memorizing these macros, you can edit color text without needing to memorize slash cc0102, for instance. And these vary by games, and these are very, very useful. I will now show these macros in action. So I can make the entire text string red by just typing this. And it will have the control character in the hex content viewer, but the actual bracketed text will show up here. Here's what it will look like in action. As you can see here, the text is all colored red. I could even change the text 
color halfway through. There is a character that is just two backslashes. If you put a raw byte after it, like say 01 or 02, you can get it to display various things that are located in RAM, such as the player's name, the rival's name, or certain numbers if you use the buffer number command. Here are a couple of limitations with NPC text that you need to know. First is that there are only so many characters that can fit on one line of text in-game, and you need to keep that limit in mind when you are making NPC scripts. It gets worse when you're making item descriptions or move descriptions, but in the case of NPC scripts, the general rule of thumb is to keep a limit of 38 characters to a line. If you use like spaces or lowercase i's, then you can maybe try 39 or 40, but to play it safe, keep it at 38 characters per line, and then afterwards you'll need a new line character of some kind. The other limit, which may not occur often, is how many characters you can load into RAM with the load pointer or message box commands. It's possible that you might load so many characters at once that it overrides important information like Pokemon data, settings, item data, etc. But usually when you load like a medium-sized string into RAM, you're overriding battle data that is normally a null value when you're in the overworld. Usually such phenomena would only occur if you're loading something like 10,000 characters at once, or even more. Like, the text I just selected has 266 bytes, that is more than safe enough to load into the game. And that's everything you need to know about text editing in Hex Manic Advance. You learned a lot in this episode, and I hope that you will take this new information and put it to great use when making your own Pokemon games. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we hope you take a look at other Hexmanic Advanced tutorials. Take care.